A Reflection on Grief and Gratitude. I've been thinking a lot about Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. He says, we urge you, sisters and brothers, to warn the idlers, cheer up the faint-hearted, support the weak, and be patient with everyone. Make sure that no one repays one evil with another. Always seek what is good for each other and for all people. And up to that point, I am with him. I am right there. This is what is needed in our world right now. To cheer up the faint-hearted, warn the idlers, support the weak, be patient with everyone. Stop repaying evil for evil and seek what is good. But then he goes on. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks for everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And give thanks for everything. Really? Really, Paul? You've lost me there, I just have to say. I'm having a hard time understanding how in the midst of such political turmoil, in the midst of a global pandemic that is spiking, how I am supposed to be thankful for everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, Paul says. Hmm. It occurs to me that my problem with Paul's language has to do with the way that I was raised with the culture in which I grew up. This culture that is so good at dividing things into either or, black and white, up and down, left or right, good and bad, grief and gratitude. I have felt it in my bones. I have heard it in the voices and hearts of many of you, people in my life, family, friends, other communities of which I am a part, there is a lot of grief right now. People are grieving what they thought we were as a country. People are grieving the divide, the polarization, the divisive language. People are grieving the loss of loved ones due to this pandemic. People are grieving the loss of friends because of political polarization. We can't even talk to them anymore, I hear people say. And now people are grieving the fact that the holiday that we look forward to every year will be very different. And our gatherings will be much smaller if we gather at all. We are grieving hugs. We are grieving connectivity. I am grieving the simple pleasure of sitting at a crowded table with friends and family. There is much to grieve. But it has also occurred to me that this grief, this sense of loss, This disappointment and thwarting of expectations of mine have also been a sort of clarifying element. They've helped me to focus and maybe even to amplify what it is about my life and my world that I am so thankful for. I miss my parents who have been dead for years, but in that grief, I am reminded of how thankful I am that I had them in my life. Thankful in a way that if they were still here, I might take for granted. I might not pay attention. So I am thankful for my friends and my family that I cannot see this holiday. I am thankful for the freedoms that I have to travel about this country, even though right now I have to stay where I am. And this pause, this interruption to the flow of our lives offers us the opportunity 
to notice what we are thankful for. The everyday, the mundane activities of our lives. I am thankful for the ability to be outside walking my dog in the crisp cold air under trees with red and yellow leaves that are so beautiful I catch my breath. We are grieving this Thanksgiving, but it does not mean we cannot be grateful. In fact, being grateful, having gratitude might just be the thing that we need to endure, to persevere, to keep putting one foot in front of the other into an unknown future, a future that is held by our God. So on this Thanksgiving holiday, I offer you the possibility of gratitude in the midst of grief. And I lift up for you a couple of quotes that I have found helpful in my life right now. The first one comes from Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Waking up this morning, I see the blue sky. I join my hands in thanks for the many wonders of life, for having 24 brand new hours. The sun is rising on the forest, and so is my awareness. And this poem from one of my favorite poets, E.E. E. Cummings, I thank you, God, for most this amazing day for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. Speaking of being grateful, please enjoy this gift of gratitude from members of Community of Christ Church. I'm thankful for sunshine in November and then my dad's test came back and he does not have cancer. I'm thankful for our family, our children, my husband, our church community, um, my good quilting friends, 
and that we have our health and jobs and are able to do good work during this time. And I am also thankful for our family, our kids, my lovely wife, mm -hmm. our dog Iris, and very thankful for all of you. I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for the more direct contact with more people brought on by the limitations of society through distancing. I observe that I know people, their ideas, appreciations, memories, and aspirations because we take time to talk. I see our Lord in them and in me. This is my thanksgiving thought. Bless you. When thinking about what we're grateful for, it's easy this year to just go to a place that's pretty dark and feel like it has been such a difficult year. Uh, however, I think of so many things I'm grateful for in spite of all of the uh, tragedy and um, hardship we've endured. Uh, for Michael and I, we haven't endured any hardship. We've kept, I've kept my job. He has, you know, been fine. We've been healthy. Our children are healthy and our grandchildren are healthy. Um, I'm also very grateful for this church community that uh, the sermon today was so uplifting and I saw all the people at church and my heart just soared with happiness for being part of this community. And at this time of year, we're always grateful for our children that they are here because 37 years ago, Thanksgiving weekend, they were born and they spent their first two months in the NICU. So we're happy for family and grateful for it. And grateful for all of you and we wish you all a very blessed Thanksgiving.